Hello and welcome to this video on the circulatory system. Let's uh, discuss briefly why we need a circulatory system in the first place. Now, all cells respire, they all do respiration. So they need to take in glucose and oxygen and they need to get rid of carbon dioxide and water as waste products. Now, these substances move over very short distances by a process called diffusion. Now, a single cell creature like this can do it through its membrane. It can just absorb oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide. Because it's, a very, it's so small, it happens over short distances, and it doesn't need a circulatory system. However, in creatures like us, in large multicellular creatures, we need to be able to deliver oxygen and carbon dioxide to every single part of the body. So, in this rather complicated looking diagram here, we've got carbon dioxide being produced, so we've got respiration happening in all of these cells, CO2 building up and it's diffusi diffusing through this very thin membrane here and into the blood capillary. Don't worry about all this, this complicated stuff, that's not necessary. So all you need to take home here is the fact that carbon dioxide is diffusing into a blood capillary. Now look how thin the wall of that blood capillary is. It has to be that way because as I said before diffusion can only take place over very very short distances. There is not a single cell in your body that's more than a tenth of a millimeter from a capillary. So these tiny blood vessels permeate absolutely every single part of the body. You can see here that a red blood cell only just fits down a blood capillary. So these capillaries really are absolutely tiny. Let's see if we can get some sort of idea of the size of the things we're talking about. So if we begin to zoom in, now don't forget we're talking about something that is microscopic. This cannot be seen without the help of a microscope. So our brains really cannot deal with things on this scale. But let's see if we can get some idea of what we're talking about. So a grain of salt there, we're going up to a millimeter, one millimeter in size. That uh, orange ball there, that's a human egg cell. That is the, one of the largest single cells there is. You can actually see it's about the size of a full stop. Zooming in further, a mist droplet, and there we are, you can see a red blood cell there. Zooming in. So that gives you some idea of the size of what we're talking about. Now a red blood cell will only just fit down a blood capillary. So these blood capillaries are absolutely tiny. They really are very, very small. So here's a really nice diagram of the heart. Let's, uh, let, I'll take you on a journey through the heart uh, from the perspective of a, a red blood cell. So it comes in through here, through the left pulmonary veins. Now this blood has just been to the lungs. So it's dropped off its carbon dioxide it's picked up its oxygen, so it's bright red in color, and it comes through here to the left atrium. At the same time, deoxygenated blood from the body comes in through the vena cava and in here into the right atrium, so the top part of the heart is full of blood. The top part contracts and the blood squeezes down into the left and right ventricles. Then this bottom part compresses, blood moves through here, through the aorta, and off to the body. On this side, the right ventricle compresses and it squeezes through here and off to the lungs. It picks up oxygen and comes back down again. So the heart beats top first, then bottom, then top, then bottom. Let's have a look at that in action. Blood moving through and up to the body, through and up to the body. And on this side, blood from the body off to the lungs. So that's it, that's the heart. Now in a, in a funny kind of sense, you've got two hearts. You've got one on this side, which does the circulation to the body, and then you've got one on this side, which does the circulation to your lungs. And there are two reasons for that, and I'll just have a, have a talk to you about that in a second. A um, couple of things I want you to notice. Firstly, we have these valves. Now, the job of these valves is to stop the blood going back the way it just came. It's possible, in certain cases, for these valves to fold backwards, like an umbrella in a strong wind, um, but most of the time they should work properly and they should stop the blood going back through the system. So you've got these two here, and then you've got these two valves here which stop the blood going back. Now that sort of ba bum noise of your heartbeat is these valves slamming shut. First bum, second one. So that's your heartbeat, these doors slamming shut, one, two. And again, one, two. That's your heartbeat. That's what's responsible for your heartbeat. Um, another thing I want you to look at is the thickness of the ventricle wall. Look at the thickness of the right ventricle. 
now look at the thickness of the left ventricle. Left ventricle is much, much stronger. And the reason for that is this side has to pump blood to the whole body. It's got a much bigger journey to do. Whereas this side only has to pump blood to the lungs. Also, your lungs, the alveoli in your lungs, are very, very delicate. And the capillaries are very, very delicate. Anything strong, any high pressure blood would burst those capillaries open and your little air sacs in your lungs would begin to fill with blood. So this is one of the reasons why we have this separation. Now, in this animation, you can get an idea of what I was talking about before with the, the idea we've got two hearts, two hearts stuck together. We've got one which does what's called the systemic circulation, the body. This is the blood that goes off to the body. And then we've got the other half, which does the pulmonary circulation, the blood that goes around to the lungs. So our heart, our circulatory system is called a double circulatory system. Uh, a red blood cell will go heart, lungs, heart, body, heart, lungs, heart, body. And uh, not a huge number of animals actually have this double circulatory system. And we've already talked about some of the reasons why. The fact that we can't pump under very high pressure to the lungs because we would burst them. Um, the fact that this side needs to be stronger than this side so that we can pump all the way around the body. But one of the other reasons is we don't really want to mix these bloods together, the deoxygenated and the oxygenated blood together. We want to keep one lot of blood full of oxygen and one lot of blood without oxygen. And the reason for that is so we can maintain what's called a diffusion gradient. Um, and this allows oxygen and carbon dioxide to be uh, exchanged much more efficiently. So that's why we have this double circulatory system. Let's finish up by having a look at some of these blood vessels in a little bit more detail. So first of all, let's start with the arteries. Now, rule is generally arteries take blood away from the heart, arteries away. Um, you'll notice they've got a much thicker wall than the veins or the capillaries. Um, this is because they carry blood under very high pressure. They've just come from the heart. There's a huge amount of pressure and you don't want these things bursting. So they have this thick wall. Now the wall is also elastic, it has to be. The, the heart is not a pump like, uh, like a, a fish tank pump or something like that where it's just a continuous flow of water round and round. It, what actually happens is when the heart beats you get this lump of blood that moves through your circulatory system and what happens is the artery actually swells, it actually stretches to accommodate this lump of blood moving through and you can feel that swelling in certain parts of your body on your wrist or your neck and that's what's responsible for your pulse. Um, they've got a smaller gap, this is called the lumen, the actual tube there, smaller lumen than um, veins. So that's arteries. Veins carry blood under much lower pressure. It's been through the body, it's been through all these little tiny capillaries, it's lost a lot of its pressure. So it's much lower pressure, so it doesn't need such thick walls. Larger lumen, and a lot of the time, this blood is not only under very low pressure, but it's also going uphill, it's going against gravity, and the blood is trying to move its way back up towards your heart. It's trying to move back down again, and to stop it moving back down, just like in the heart, you've got these valves. So veins have got valves to stop the blood backing up, going back the way it just came. Finally, let's talk about um, capillaries. We've, saw, we've seen how tiny these things are, and they have to be because, as we said at the beginning, diffusion of gases only takes place over very, very tiny distances. So these things have to be right next to the cells of your body. Um, one single cell thick, they carry blood at quite low pressure, and this is where all the exchange of all those substances required for respiration takes place. So there we are, a very quick run through of uh, the circulatory system. Thank you very much for watching.